Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, before I start, one quick question. Uh, how many you are at a WordCamp for the first time? Wow, that's a lot of people. Thank you for being here. That's exciting. Are you enjoying it so far? Good. Will you be back? Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. So, my name is Francesca. Uh, I'm the WordPress Community Manager at SiteGround, the international web hosting company, and proud sponsor of WordMan Miami. Uh, before doing that, I was a freelancer that built websites for freelancers, and I taught them how to use them. And a lot of time was spent teaching them how to format their content so people will read it and hopefully buy what they're selling. Uh, so this talk was born out of that six years experience. How many of you have heard this slogan, content is king? It's a very popular one, right? So it was declared so by Bill Gates in 1996. And I always imagine a king with lavish clothes. So I like to think of formatting as a beautiful embroidery that will add some more color and richness to an already beautiful fabric that is your text. This talk will be divided in two parts. Um, the first one is a little bit about the history and the theory of why we do the things we do and why it's so important to format. And then we'll go over some options that you will use to format your text. So let's start with a little bit of history. Uh, the web is getting old. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, depending what's your age. <laughs> like 29 years old. It, it turned 29 at the beginning of this week. Um, yeah, March 12th. That's an important date because we all have a job because of it. So thank you. <laughs> so um, Sir Tim Berners-Lee, uh, wrote a proposal for what we now know as the World Wide Web in 1989 that was deemed vague but exciting by his boss at CERN, the Institute of Research. And, but it got the green light, so now we have the World Wide Web. Um, uh, Sir Tim Berners-Lee also wrote the first uh, elements of HTML in 1992. And a few years later, he published the specs for HTML 2.0, which is the standard upon which we base all future implementation of HTML. We're now at version number five. And finally, the most important date for our talk here today is October 1st, 1997, when Jacob Nielsen, uh, who is a word usability and user interface expert, uh, conducted a study uh, on a group of about 80 people in the summer of 1997 on how do people read on the web. How do people do read on the web? Well, they don't. <laughs> they didn't in 1997, and they still don't, unfortunately. Uh, this is why uh, people scan content, and this is why formatting is so important. So we'll, you will need the reader through a path and hopefully to the end of your page. Um, it doesn't matter if you're writing to share your recipes online or you have a blog with a highly optimized uh, leading uh, landing pages that, to convert leads and stuff like that. You want people to read what you're writing. Uh, so this is why uh, you need to format to help them get through the end of the text. And you have everything you need to write good copy and format it in a good way in this 20 years old article. Um, so you should use lists, headings, uh, paragraphs, uh, bold, you know, all these elements were already in the first uh, version of HTML. So 26 years ago, and I'm amazed that we still see a lot of pages that are just a wall of text. And that's not helping readers get to the end of the page. Before we go into formatting with WordPress, we'll see a little bit of HTML. How does it look like? Uh, so you can better understand how to organize your text. HTML is not a programming language. It's a markup language that you will use uh, to define the structure of the content inside a page. 
Uh, semantically might seem like a big word, but it basically just means that the element itself is describing its own meeting, meaning to the browser. So if it's a paragraph, it's a paragraph. I'm saying that it's a paragraph and not a list or a quote or something else. Uh, all web pages are based on HTML, so if you want to go into this business, learn HTML. Uh, and most elements have a, an opening and closing tag uh, in the form of uh, angular brackets with some um, exceptions. And knowing how HTML looks like will help you fix some problems that might arise when you start formatting. All these tags can be added by just pressing buttons on your WordPress. <laughs> But if you want to see what a, an HTML tag looks like, that's our, the most common you will use. And you see, most tags are abbreviation of English words. So P stands for paragraph, block quote is the whole word, uh, ordered list, O, L, unordered list, U, L, list item, L, I. So if you remember what you're doing, then you'll probably remember the tag after a while. And this is what it looks like in your website. Paragraph, block quote, unordered list, ordered list. I would like to spend a few moments on the heading element and introduce you to the concept of accessibility. Uh, so in HTML, you have six headings from one to six, and they're hierarchical, which is a word that I find very difficult in English, so bear with me. <laughs> so heading one is more important than heading six. Uh, don't use heading one inside your page or post. Uh, they're reserved to the page or post title, and that's important for SEO and accessibility reasons. So start from H2, heading two. Um, one of the most common mistakes that I see people doing is using those elements non-hierarchically. Yes, I did it. <laughs> so they might use H4 because it looks better than H2. The style of the element is nicer, but it shouldn't be used like this. H2, H3, H4, H5, H6. And the other uh, mistake that I see uh, people doing is using formatting, pure formatting, to substitute headings. So, you know, like making, uh, making it bolder, making it bigger, making it colored, stuff like that. It will look okay in the browser, but it will not help our readers. And we want to help all the readers. And what I mean by that, I don't know if you're familiar with accessibility, the concept of accessibility. How many of you are familiar with it? At least a little bit. Okay. Um, I added a bunch of links at the end to get you started and you can always go to wordpress.tv uh, search for accessibility and you'll see a bunch of talks and i really suggest you go and you know get familiar with the concept um, i'm not an accessibility expert uh, but by now i know one thing don't assume everyone uses the web like you do okay so the aim of accessibility is to remove barriers uh, that prevent access to website uh, for people with different abilities. Um, just to give you two examples, people might listen to a, to a page and not read it, or they might browse a page with a keyboard or voice-activated commands. So using uh, semantic HTML, uh, structuring a page correctly uh, is beneficial for everyone. So good formatting uh, is not about how it will look ultimately, but it's really about making it easier for everyone to access the content and use it. The great thing is you don't need to be an expert and you don't need to know anything about accessibility to actually have an accessibility ready uh, website. Go to the wordpress.org repository, theme repository, uh, look for accessibility ready theme, and someone that knows about accessibility has prepared and reviewed the themes that are made correctly, let's say. Uh, just use it as it is. Don't change colors, sizes, how links look like, how buttons look like. Just use it as it is and concentrate on formatting your text for accessibility and maximum readability. 
So we don't have time to go through all the elements you'll see in the formatting bars. And to be honest, some of them are not really about semantic HTML, not pure formatting. So, uh, and there's a lot of them, so we don't have time to see them today. Uh, I did a bunch of screenshots and it, depending on the version of WordPress or Gutenberg, we'll get to that in a minute, you're using, it might look a little bit different. In fact, I had to redo all the screencasts for Gutenberg a few days ago because a lot of things changed <laughs> this week. Uh, so it might look a little bit different, but don't worry, because what you'll see that all the icons are actually standard icons that you probably have already encountered in your life in any text editor you have, might have been using Word, OpenOffice, uh, Google Documents, they, the, the icons all look the same. You have different ways to formatting in, in WordPress right now. You have, let's say, three. It's not correct. You have other ways, but for the purpose of the talk, we we'll stick to the basics. Um, you use the editor. This is what you see now when you go into your post or page that's called the editor. You might have heard the classic editor now that we're transitioning at some point to a different text editor. Uh, you have all the options in a bar, or in two bars, to be more correct. And you might have heard that there's a new editor coming into town. Have you heard about Gutenberg? Yes. <laughs> so uh, Gutenberg will become the default editor um, from next WordPress release. Uh, right now, it's a plugin. Uh, you shouldn't miss, there's going to be a talk here at 350 by Matt Cornwell, and he'll guide you through the functionality of Gutenberg, so make sure to come, it's going to be really interesting. Um, these two methods have a user interface, which is another big word to say, you press buttons. <laughs> All right, so if you want something to happen, you'll press the relevant button and it will happen. Or you can type the HTML tag in the text editor and we will see how. This is the formatting bar today. I never know how to use the beam to show stuff, uh, sorry. Um, but you'll see, you, if you click on toggle toolbar, another toolbar will, will appear and you have the visual mode and the text mode, visual as well, visual <laughs> and text will show you the relevant HTML tags that have been used to structure the page. In Gutenberg, uh, you see a smaller selection of options that will appear once you click into the text or you start a new paragraph. Uh, you'll see that there are different formatting bars. They have different icons uh, and they will appear once they're needed. So they're contextual and they're all different. You see every uh, selector and every bar has different options depending on the content that inside the block. So let's go through some of the options for proper formatting. The first one is the paragraph selector. It's not a paragraph selector anymore. <laughs> I still call it uh, like this. It's a paragraph selector in the editor. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, don't use heading, not for heading. <laughs> That's what they're reserved for. Uh, don't use them just because they look nice. They mean something to the browser and to the people that browse the internet in a different way that you might be used to. Uh, but also, uh, they're, they have a different style, so your eyes will go there, so use them correctly, right? Um, the paragraph is the default format you have on your text, and pre-formatted uh, can be used to insert code in your text. Uh, and this is a screenshot from the actual editor that we have. Uh, on Gutenberg, the procedure is a little bit different. So uh, you have two options. Either you write a paragraph and then you turn it into something else, or you start a new block with the something else that you want. Um, Gutenberg introduced also some new fun stuff like uh, verse and uh, subheading, uh, just you should just explore and have fun. Uh, as you can see, the headings, well, at some point in the loop, you'll see it. Uh, Gutenberg gives us only three options, heading two, heading three, heading four, um, which are basically the most common. If you think of a structure 
then you'll see that it's quite, uh, you won't go as deep as H5 or H6 unless it's a super structured text you're writing. And these are the HTML tags. Again, uh, refrain from using H1 because it is reserved to the post and the page title and it's uh, better not to use it both for SEO and accessibility. I added some links at the end that will explain why. Pre is the pre-formatted uh, text tag and P is the paragraph. If you go into text mode, you won't see the P element uh, because that's the default element uh, in WordPress. So it, you won't see it in the text editor, but it's there. If you go see the source of the page in your browser, you'll see it there. And this is the final result, doesn't matter uh, what kind of formatting are you using? You have your headlines, you have your pre-formatted text, and you have your regular paragraph. Bold and ita italic. So bold is used to draw attention. So please don't make a whole paragraph bold because otherwise I don't know what's important, <laughs> right? So if you use it to make one word uh, stand out or a shorter sentence instead of a longer sentence, but if everything is important, nothing is important and I will just go to the next paragraph. Now, Italic has different rules in different uh, langu languages. For example, in Italian, we use it to highlight words that are not in Italian. So please first check with your third grade teacher and then use Italic. Don't abuse it. Italic is very hard to read, most, <laughs> almost for everyone, but for people with reading impairments, it's really confusing because it blends words together. So use it, don't abuse it. They're pretty straightforward. You just highlight the word you want to put in bold or italic, click the button, and it will happen. You can do this with HTML. These are the corresponding uh, tags. And this is the result. As you can see, italic is really hard to read, especially in the sans serif font. It will take you like a few milliseconds to get there. So unless this is really vital or it needs to be italic because our third grade teacher said so, uh, refrain from using it and really don't make the whole thing italic. List, lists are another thing that really works well uh, in, uh, in web text. Uh, because it appears to the left side of our brain, the analytical side. So we'll see things going step by step. Uh, you have two different kind of lists in uh, WordPress, in HTML to be honest, uh, which has ordered list or unordered list. Ordered list or numbered list, uh, you'll use them when the items need to be in a specific order and bulleted or unordered lists, you can use them when the items don't need to be in a specific order. You can either turn um, a text into a list to just make sure every item is in a new paragraph and not a new line, and then you just highlight it and press the corresponding button, ordered or unordered list. Uh, or you can start a new paragraph and start a new list, again, pressing the corresponding button and you'll start a new list. Uh, same goes for Gutenberg. And you see when you start uh, putting your mouse inside the paragraph, you'll see different uh, bars popping up depending on uh, what you want to do. But again, you can do it both ways. Either start a new paragraph with a list or turn an existing paragraph into a list. This is the corresponding HTML. You see O, L, ordered list, U, L, unordered list, and every uh, list item as a li tag and you see the opening tags and the see the closing tags i never know what that's called in english it's a reverse slash a what a forward slash why a forward that is going backwards anyway call it whatever you want <laughs> this is what it looks like <laughs> Uh, block quote is another element that is often misused because it looks pretty. It looks really pretty in every theme I ever used. They put some really nice uh, touches into the block quote element. It's usually, you know, a different font and it might have another element that I have no idea what it's called in English. The 
quotes. Oh, that's so easy. It makes so much sense. I don't know why in Italian it's not like that. <laughs> so <laughs> you have the quotes and it looks nice, but that's not its intended use. The intended use is actually to add a quote inside your text. Um, a non-semantic use of this element has been deprecated since HTML 4.0, that was about 20 years ago, or something like that. So if you want to use it for presentational purposes, don't. Use it for an actual quote. Um, in the editor, you simply highlight uh, the paragraph you want to turn into a quote, press the button, turn it into a quote. In Gutenberg, it's really fun, you have a bunch of options. Um, you have different styles. Again, you can either turn a paragraph into a quote or start a new block uh, as a quote. Uh, you have two different styles, and the thing that I really think it's really cool they introduced is the cite element, the citation, uh, which is a good reminder to give credit where credit is due. So, you know, if we pick a quote from somewhere, you should add the author. Um, so this is how it looks like. Uh, when you see the mouse going into a gray bar, this is how you add a new block in Gutenberg, by the way, if you were wondering. The HTML is a little bit more complex because if you also want to add a dissertation, you need a different uh, um, element. But again, now you know what it looks like. It makes sense. Block quote site. I, it, you don't really have to guess. And this is the final result. You see, it's really pretty. This is why a lot of people use, misuse it. Alignment is not really an HTML element. It's actually a um, CSS class added to a regular paragraph. Um, and beside the technical side of it, I strongly suggest you stick to left alignment. Uh, there's a reason for this. So centered and justified looks really good on print but they're very hard to read on the web. So if your language is left to right, like English is, stick to left alignment. You don't need to do anything. The reason why is because when you write a text uh, with your left alignment, it will create a straight edge on the left side of your text. So the eyes will always find the starting point of a new line. It makes it easier and faster to read. When you have a center text, the line starts in a new place every time, so it's slower. And for people with reading impairments, it's really difficult. So unless it's vital, stick to left to right. And you don't have to do anything. Um, left to right is the default mode in uh, WordPress. If your language is English, again, if your language is right to left, then the, uh, the default alignment is going to be right to left. Um, if you must, just highlight the part, the paragraph that you want to align, and press the corresponding button. Uh, up is the editor, down is Gutenberg, uh, and this is the final result. I have to admit, I'm a known abuser of strike through. I love strike through. I use it to be sarcastic. That's not how you should use it. <laughs> That's a semantic element, okay? So, um, in fact, what the del, the, we call it strike through, but the HTML element is called delete, del. And it actually says that a portion of the test, text has been deleted. No, and the re browser will render it as a strike through, but the meaning of it is deleted text. Um, highlight it strike through, delete, and you're done. Uh, you can see the real intended use of this element. If you go into the text mode, you'll see it added a timestamp. Do you see the timestamp? This is when the text was deleted. So that's how you should do it. If you want to uh, create a presentational element that will strike through your word, you should do that in CSS. Uh, if you don't have to skill, the skills to do it, it's okay. Keep coming to WordCamp and you'll learn it. <laughs> but while you do, uh, just use it, but don't abuse it again, because I, 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 do, I, I do this. It's terrible. <laughs> I wanted to skip this one. Don't color, don't color the text, okay? Because when you install a theme, it has a series of fonts, sizes, and colors that were created for you in this beautiful uh, palette. 
and then you go and bang, you introduce an, a color that has nothing to do with the palette that was, you know, well designed for your WordPress website or for any website. If for some reason you really need to do this, but honestly, try not to do this. I added this slide just to show you what not to do. Uh, select the portion of the text that you want to color and press the corresponding uh, the corresponding uh, color in Gutenberg, um, you'll find a lot more options. This is one thing that I'm not super fond of to the new editor because this presents itself to so many misuse. Uh, but one cool thing is that you can color the background. So if you want to do a call to action with a different background to, you know, uh, highlight some content, you do that. Just make sure that the text color is going to have a good contrast. Um, on the background, so it's going to be readable. There are a number of common annoyances. Uh, it will happen, and happen to the best of us. And I don't count myself into the best of us, so it will happen to you too. <laughs> um, now you know what to do with that, because you know what an, an HTML element looks like, so you can move it around if you need to. First of all, nested elements. Let's say you have a blog quote and you want to start a new list. Uh, inevitably, the list is going to go inside the blog quote, and that's not what you want. So instead of cursing at your screen, which is like what I normally do, uh, keep your cool, go to the text editor, move the, blog, the closing tag for the blog quote after the, the quote itself, and then uh, the list is going to be in its own element. Uh, same goes uh, for, actually on Gutenberg, it's much easier just to do a new element uh, a new block, sorry. So that's how you solve it. Uh, paragraph versus new line. You know, when you click enter and you get a new paragraph, you're like, no, I just want a new line. I want to start something new, but not a new paragraph. Click enter, you'll get a new paragraph. Click shift enter, you get a new line. That's true also for most of the web text editor. You're going to use also Google Documents, so that's a good one uh, to know. Uh, in Gutenberg, it will start a new paragraph, so uh, a new block when you hit enter. So just do shift enter if you want to start a new line. And finally, get me out of this list. This is also very common. You have a list, uh, you get to the last item, you want to add something more, you don't want another item in your list, uh, but you're still blocked in that list. Again, please press twice, enter, or get, you get out of there. You'll see. Um, you see the animation, uh, so that's where you start. If, if you don't want to do it with enter, you just go to the uh, text editor and start the text after the closing tag of the list. Uh, same goes for Gutenberg. This actually changed this week, so <laughs> this slide was completely different. <laughs> but, uh, now you can do this also in Gutenberg. Click twice uh, and you'll get out of there. Lots of links. Lots of links, because I'm obsessed with this um, topic. <laughs> because I hate it when I go into a website and it's a wall of text. I'm like, what do you want me to do? I really want to read you, but no way I'm going to do this. I'm too lazy to read this uh, incredible amount of words. Tell me what are the important things. Show me a heading. Show me a list. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of reading material. Uh, a little bit about the history, a little bit about accessibility, and a little bit more. I already uploaded the slides, so if you go to Twitter and you check at Francesca Marano, you'll see uh, the slides. Um, I really hope this talk was useful to you, and you'll join me uh, in making the web a more readable place for everyone. If you have questions, I think I have time for a couple. Otherwise, I'll be at the happiness bar. Otherwise, I'll be at the side ground booth for the whole weekend. So just come and be obsessed with me. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, I because I always uh, write the whole t uh, hold the link uh, not just as a clickable because I'm not always sure the exporting of the PDF will work. So worst thing worst, you can just type in into your bar browser. Uh, usually PDF exporting does well with links, but not always. So, so 
that's just my preference. Yes? Ah, I can't hear you. I'm going to come closer. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to do also a bit of mic running. Yes. So if you're going to rebuild your website today, yes. should you use the editor or the Gutenberg? Oh. That's a tough question. <laughs> I want to be diplomatic. Uh, that's how you say it. I love the, the classic editor because I'm used to it. I've been using it for 10 years. Uh, so I don't really have to look what I'm doing. But I think Gutenberg has a lot of potential. And I think, especially if you like a UI, when you, user interface when you do stuff, I think it's great. And for a new user, if you get used to it, I don't think you'll ever want to go back to the classic editor. It's just the old, boring people like me that were used to that, and we have a bit of a hard time accepting change. <laughs> the HT. Uh, well, Gutenberg adds a lot of inline CSS, but yeah, the HTML is always HTML. It has been for 26 years, and it's going to be for the rest of our life, hopefully. Anyone else? No? Okay. So I'll wait for you at the happiness bar if you want. And thank you for being with me.